So I did not realize when you guys were coming into the studio, I had mascara coming down my cheek. <laughs> um, and I probably still have a little bit smeared from my eyes, and it's okay. Um, I don't care if I'm a mess. <laughs> because I did start crying in the last class, and I'm going to share with you why I was crying in the last class, because I think it's important to discuss. Um, first of all, happy Valentine's Day. Hope uh, you're able to tap into the love within your own heart. It's constantly there. We just have to take the time to move inside and to look into it. Um, if we move into the recesses of our mind, if we're sitting in meditation, we go into that really peaceful, blissful state. And that is where we can feel experience that profound love um, that doesn't have any embellishment that's not romanticized it's just there you know um, hopefully today we're going to be opening up the chest and opening up the heart and creating some back bend so that you can allow that to exude and to be part of your expression for today um, but I do want to start off with this because I might cry again. Um, a few days ago, I woke up shocked and saddened that someone from our community had passed away. And it's been really, really difficult um, for me having half moon as long as I did. And having that sense of community like we had built and then getting dispersed and having to close and having to get rid of my software system that held everybody's information, everybody's phone numbers and emails. And I don't have that anymore unless you were on my newsletter list, you know. And so I wasn't able to reach out to everybody. I didn't know how everybody has been doing through this pandemic. You know, we tried moving over to the hot room and only a certain amount of people were coming, which is understandable considering the circumstances and considering where we had landed, you know? And um, I've tried over the last couple of years to, to keep the teachings as accessible as possible. You know, I'm doing uh, this online studio. Thank you guys for joining me today, by the way and supporting that, but I've also been doing live classes for anyone who's willing and feeling uh, able to attend live classes. I've also equally put up classes on YouTube for completely free, hoping that if anyone was down on their luck financially, um, that they could still have the classes available to them. And I have also had that up for anybody that may be in kind of a desperate situation or feeling that longing for our community that they were missing and being able to just, you know, from their home, get on their computer and log in and we're there uh, in, in that way. So I don't know where everybody's at. And what I'm super concerned with and happened since the beginning is where are people mentally? Where are you mentally? And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned, I'm gonna be creating a workshop for March called Resetting the Pandemic Mind. Uh, Allison, my friend said it beautifully. She was like, everybody's walking around in a hypnotic psychosis. And I think that was like the perfect description for it. Um, but anyway, to make a long story short, she was a veterinarian. She came to our yen classes. She would come every Tuesday night and every Saturday. And until she got married, she got married maybe about a year before the pandemic hit. I didn't see her as much after she got married, even though she was still coming around because she was in her honeymoon phase, right? And um, I got that. Um, but she committed suicide. And um, I had to piece it together. That was not mentioned in the obituary, but someone else had reached out to me 
online and said someone from our community, and she meant from her community as being in the veterinary field, had committed suicide and I was able to piece it all together and it was her. And she was a beautiful person and Kathy Jacek, you guys may remember that helped with the karma desk. She remembered her and reached out to me about it and it just breaks my heart. It completely breaks my heart. We don't know from looking at someone from the outside what inner demons they're facing. We don't know um, if they are sinking into a state of depression. We don't know how this pandemic has affected them. We don't know if they're so inundated with fear they can't leave their house. We don't know if they're having so much stress at work. They just feel like they can't wake up the next day and do another day of it. We just don't know. And so this, I know is a holiday about love and I don't feel like it needs to be all romanticized. It doesn't have to be about partner love. It could be community love. It could be self-love. Really, it could be just about love in general. And I want you to love on yourself. We need to love on ourselves. We need to love on each other. And that's one reason I love this weekend and all the different workshops that I do because it's just a way for me to love on people and to open up that space for us to remember love. Um, and I want today's practice to be about that, even though I'm starting with a few tears. Um, so if you could lie down on your back and get comfortable, have your strap and the block next to you because we will be using it at some point. I was gonna play a song, but I, I'm gonna leave it out. I'm actually not gonna play it now. I was planning on playing Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Troubled Waters. Um, it's a beautiful song and it's meant to bring about comfort. It's meant to be encouraging. It is meant to be, um, you know, kind of open to interpretation because it could allude to being supported and loved and encouraged by God or the divine. It could be encouragement and love being brought to you by a lover or by a friend or family member or even just someone looking at you through the eyes of empathy and compassion. But you all know the song. And so with that song in mind, we will be building up for a bridge pose today. Now, the troubled waters that the song references is like the past or the demons that we've overcome. That's no longer within the stream of our thoughts. We've risen above it. And I just want you to reflect for a moment on maybe some times or moments where you've been a little down and out. And what brought you back to the light? Who or what helped you to see that there was another way? And how were you able to let the love back in? Start to take and develop some slow, deep, breath. I say this a lot, it never hurts to say it again. The breath truly can be the bridge between the mind and the body. It can be the bridge between the body and the soul. It can be the bridge between the lower self and the higher self. And it can be the bridge that helps us to rise above any of our challenges. So invest in your breath. Use it wisely.
and find your strap. Once you find your strap, we're going to bring the right knee towards the chest. And we're going to wrap the strap around the ball of the foot and sail it up in the air. Slightly tug on the strap so that you feel your heel getting more elevated. And then equally press the padding of the foot into the fabric. So you're igniting both the front and the back of the leg the muscles around your shin, as well as in your calves, your quads, as well as your hamstrings. Check in with your low back. Maybe you need the left knee to be bent. Perhaps you can slide and extend that leg down to the floor. Find your edge of flexibility. and make sure you don't hold your breath. Now take both ends of the strap into your right hand. Use your left hand to hold down your left hip and move into Padmasana B. Try not to tip the pelvis. Try not to twist through the belly. You're just abducting the leg away from your midline. On your next in-breath, go ahead and sail the leg back up. Swap hands to hold the strap. Open up your right arm shoulder height. Roll towards your left hip. And go ahead and move into your twist. This time the belly is rotating. On your next inhale, slowly bring that leg back up overhead, bend the knee, remove the foot. Plant the foot for now. Draw your left knee in towards your chest. Take the strap around the ball of the left foot. Straighten it up. Pull slightly on the strap to jut the heel skyward, and then press the padding of the foot into the back. Check in with your low back. Maybe this is perfect. Maybe you can extend your right leg forward and out. Notice how it changes up the stretch. And then find your edge. Bring the ends of the strap together. Use your right hand to hold down your right hip. Fan the leg open and apart. Finding your edge with your flexibility through those adductor muscles, the inner thighs. Letting your breath come and go. Inhale, build the leg back up over the body. Swap hands to hold the strap. Free up your left arm. And take the supine twist. Inhale, roll back to center. Exhale, bend the knee, remove the strap, set the foot to the floor, and slide your right foot back to join. We're going to do a gentle roll, modified way to do fish pose. If your neck is um, a problem for you with fish, then you should really know this uh, way of doing it. Reach the arms straight up over your body where the palms turn to face each other. And pick up your arms to the degree where your shoulders actually elevate away from your mat. 
All right, now plug the shoulders back down. Feel how that secures your upper back. Now slide your upper arms beside your ribs. Let them scrape your ribs. Push the upper arms down into the floor to the degree where your shoulder blades kind of cinch in towards your spine, where you're no longer feeling the blade of the shoulders touching the floor. Instead, you feel the cavity of your chest, the center point of your chest, really lifting and popping up towards the ceiling. This is a lot of action in the arms, pushing down through the arms to elevate the chest. Feel the sway, the swerve through your spine. Let's take three breaths here in modified fish. Notice it's not cranking your neck, but there is a little bit of work in the neck. A slight opening between the chest and the chin, but nothing fierce. As you exhale, broaden your shoulders, let them relax down and take your hands to reside on your belly. Okay, we're gonna work around the clock here. The pubic bone is six, the navel or above is 12. Your right hand's three and your left hand is nine, okay? So let's roll to six. That's gonna lift the low back off the floor. Squeeze down and into the right side of your belly to three. And then suction in through your entire core. So your low back flattens and you're building it up to 12. And then move it on over to the left side of the abdominals to nine. So moving forward to six. To the right to three. Up to 12. Am I miss, I'm messing all that up, the numbers, aren't I? <laughs> you know what I mean. Just work around the clock. I think I had the three and the nines mixed up. All right, now reverse it. One more. Now that you've worked with those abdominal muscles, hug your knees in. This is called Apanasana Wind Release Pose. I want you to close your eyes a moment. And wrap your arms around with metta loving kindness towards yourself and Maya tree, radical self-acceptance. Bringing all this love home to yourself. And affirming, I reduce my scattered forces to rise up and away into the sky. Now just take a hold of your right knee and extend your left leg out, but let the heel hover above the ground. Scoop the belly in as you breathe out, lifting the nose up towards the knee. Inhale, lower the head and swap sides. So you're holding your left knee, extend your right. Scoop the belly in, peel the head off the floor, nose to knee. Inhale, release and swap legs. Exhale, pump in and lift. Inhale, release and swap sides. Exhale, scoop in and lift up. Do it once more to each side. And after that last one, bend your knees, soften your feet to the ground. Find your block. Push down through the soles of the feet, energetically tuck the tailbone. So the low back is lifted away from the floor and you can slide the block to support your sacrum. 
So it's like you're sitting on top of the block. From here, pick up your left ankle, cross it over your right knee, and just let it take rest there. See how it feels for your body if you were to pick up the right foot off the ground and sail the right leg skyward, keeping that left ankle still propped on your right thigh. Now exhale, bend the top leg. So just descend your right foot halfway down. Maybe draw the right thigh a little closer towards your chest to receive a deeper hip stretch. And then return the right foot down to your sticky mat. Good, release your left ankle. Flatten the foot to the floor. Pick up your right foot, crisscross it over your left thigh or knee. And just be here for now. Breath rolling in. A breath rolling out. Now, if you need to stay here, that's okay. But see how it feels if you were to sail the left foot stuck, the legs extended. Pausing and breathing in this shape. And then drive that, drop the right foot halfway down and just let the bend of that left knee come in slightly more towards your chest to receive that deeper hip stretch. And then allow the left foot to sink down and uncross that right ankle, both feet on the floor. Pick up your hips, squeeze the glutes, take the block from underneath you, and roll it back down. Take the block now in between your thighs. Hug it in. Bring the arms down beside you, palms down face. And then inhale, rise into a low two-legged table. which looks like a very low version of bridge. It just has a different name. So the block is being squeezed here. The feet are rooting. This is a good hamstring strengthener, a good toner for the buttocks and a good strengthener for the low back. Take one last breath. You're not rolling the shoulders under the body, the upper back's broad. And then exhale, gently roll it down one vertebra at a time. Move the block from in between the knees. Now sail both feet in the air, kind of like what we did with the block, except now we're in this modified or gentle form of waterfall. Spread the toes. See if you can see that whiteness of the ceiling in between each of the toes. There may be a couple that don't want to separate. And then push up through your heels. Point up through your toes. Keep holding, keep pointing, keep breathing. And then exhale, land the feet again. All right, we're going to do a bridge flow. Bring your hands back beside your hips. This time on your inhale, let the arms circle up 
and overhead, almost like a Y shaped formation. Notice how you can really lift your pelvis higher and your chest can lift towards your chin. And then as you exhale, you're going to roll down one vertebra at a time and the arms circle back around. And that's going to be a flow that we're going to do. So inhale, lifting to set you on dasana. And then exhale, rolling down one vertebra at a time. Do several more and sink with your breath. Feel free to utilize Ujjaya Pranayama. That sounds like a whisper. And bring in the affirmation to roll over in your mind. I offer every thought as a bridge to divine grace. To bring this back into the yogic teachings, let's do one more. Remember in the Yoga Sutras, it says, when I have a negative thought, think the exact opposite. And now cradle the knees in. Once you cradle the knees back in, you're going to separate your thighs wide open, coming into tree frog pose. Let go of the knees, bring the soles of the feet together down on the floor. Take supine Vadakanasana. Inhale, lift your right knee, flatten the right foot to the floor, and then exhale, wing that knee open and apart. Okay, do that twice more. Inhale, relift the right knee, flatten the foot, and exhale, rotate open from the hip. Last one, inhale, lift the right knee. Exhale, reopen to that butterfly shape. All right, left side. Inhale, flutter your left knee skyward. Exhale, let it hang open. Inhale, build it back up. Exhale, lower down. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Now roll completely to your right side and stack your hands as you roll to your left temple. Inhale, you're going to lift your right arm skyward and you're going to fan it all the way over to the right. And you can even turn your head if your neck doesn't block. And then as you exhale, you're lifting the right arm back up. And you're spinning back to your left side with the extent. So we're basically opening and closing a supine twist. Inhale, let your right arm bend up and over. Exhale, bring it right back around. Do this three more times. And on that third one, hold the twist. So affirming as you do so, I'm opening myself up to a new flow of vital life force energy within. Slowly turn back to the soles of the feet. Let the knees roll to the right. 
Go ahead and bring your left arm all the way over and stack your left hand over your right. All right, let's begin. Inhale, circle that left arm over you into the opposite side. Exhale, you're going to return back to where you started. Continue this flow, sinking it up with your breath. Next twist, hold it. Notice where you feel the pockets of resistance. Breathe into those crevices that have a stronger sensation. That's where life is showing up in the body. Pick up your left arm, return to your right side, push down through the left hand, and then slowly come up. We're going to use this strap. I would suggest folding it in half. We're going to take it into a side bend. Feel the arm straight up over the body. And then as we exhale, we're going to curve over to one side. Breathing up through the side body into that side lung. Earning strength and courage fill up my body center. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, take it to the other. Continue to open the channel of your breath. Let the love and the light in. Express the love and the light back out. Strength and courage fill up your body center. Inhale, coming back to the top. Exhale, hold on to your strap as you come up to stand. When you come to stand, we're going to take the strap behind our backs. And we're going to roll the shoulders back and lift the arms away to the safe. From there, we're going to bend the knees, send the buttocks back. Send the arms overhead and bow over your thighs and let your head completely go. So this cinching of the shoulder blades coming closer to the vertebrae is what we're doing for a more active bridge when we try to lace the hands under the body. Even though we're not interlacing the hands here, it's still the same action. Now drop the tailbone more, lift your head up, and slowly rise to stand. All right, you can set that strap off to the side. We are going to start a sun out. So if you want your blocks at the front of your mat, if you want to use those today, that way they can be accessible for you. Bring your hands to prayer position. Make sure your feet are lined up. Your legs are engaged. And look straight ahead. Right, as you inhale, let's sweep the arms to the sides and up. 
Feel free to come to upward worship. Grateful for all that you've received. And then exhale, humbly bow. As you fold forward, you can use your blocks or you can let your arms just hang like a rag doll. Your feet are pushing down so that your knees are lifting up. Affirming here, nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. If you do feel like things are holding you down or back, it's the best time to do your practice. The best time to free up your mind, your heart, your body. Remember that you are infinitely loved and supported. Inhale, we're going to step back to plank. When we line up in plank, we're going to keep the shoulders, elbows, wrists in alignment. If plank is too much today, you can always descend your knees to a tabletop position, keeping the belly firm. All right, from here, exhale, press back to downward facing dog. If you need a tabletop position, you can always slide your hands out for puppy pose as a modification for downward facing dog. Inhale, return to plank. Let your head be up. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog, and let your head bow between the upper arm bone. All right, we're going to do that one more time, supporting our own body mass and weight. It's strengthening not just to the muscles, but to our skeletal system, helping to improve bone density. Press back, downward facing dog. Now inhale, elevate your heels up, and exhale, land your knees down. All right, we're going to step forward with the right foot. When we step forward with the right foot, this is where you can bring blocks in if you feel the knee. Your hips are releasing, and you're also opening up the front of your left thigh. There's a main meridian there that goes back to the stomach, which helps us to break up some stress and worry. All right, we're going to take the hands away from the blocks to the side waist. And we're going to push heavier through the right foot to draw up through the pelvic floor and to align the spine in a more vertical position. All right, the left arm is going to reach up overhead. So already, hopefully, you're feeling a little bit more work with the iliopsoas wrapping around that left hip. If you're not feeling it as much, lift up, arch back. And then as you exhale, bring the hand to the heart and sink the hips back down. Inhale, build the head up. Push into your right foot, draw up to the pelvic floor, re-elevate the left arm. Exhale, curve back. And maybe settle back down into your hips if that's available. I'm gonna do one more of those. Inhale, lift the head. Lift the left arm as you press down into the right foot, building yourself back up. Exhale, arch back. Maybe hand to half namaste as you drop the hips back down. All right, build the head up. Lower your hands to the blocks. Curl the back toes under. Lift that back knee. You're in this kind of runner's type stance. All right, from here, you're going to turn and plant your back foot to the floor and inhale, lift your arms up, creating Varabhadrasana 1. From Varabhadrasana 1, we're going to exhale, hang the arms back, open the chest. Inhale, lift back up with your arms in the crown of your head and then exhale, open the gates of the heart. One more, inhale, sitting strong through your lower body, building up through your vertebrae. Exhale, arch your back. All right, bring the hands down, spin away from the back heel, wiggle those toes back, lose the blocks, plant the palms, step to your plank. From your plank, 
Exhale, downward facing dog. You're flying your sits bones skyward, creating this inverted V shape with your form. Inhale, come forward, plank. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Doing one more just like that. Inhale, plank. Exhaling to downward facing dog. Inhale, lift up through your heels. Exhale, sit down to your knees to table. And we're stepping the left foot through. Feel free to find blocks if you need them. Stacking that knee with precision over the ankle. And then we'll lift the hands to the hips. We'll pressurize the left foot to draw up through the pelvic floor with our root lock and belly lock. Take the right arm style. Exhale, you can arch it back. You can bring the hands to namaste and sink the hips. Inhale, the head lifts, the foot pressurizes, the right arm ascends again. Exhale, feel free to arch back. Half namaste to the heart and dropping the hips. One more head lifts. Coming up to Anjani Asana on the in breath. Exhale, taking it back and lowering towards gravity. Inhale, head up, hands down, curl the back toes. We're lifting that back knee. Stretching out through the thigh bones. Offsetting and planting the back foot so that we can come up into Varavadrasana 1. Get your positioning. Torso stacked over the pelvis at first. Hips teeing off. And then exhale, hang back and open the gate to the heart. Two more. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, bow back. Good. Inhale up. Exhale, hang back. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, hands come down to the blocks. Spin away from the back heel. Launch the back foot forward and fold again to your Uttanasana. Let your head drape down. Feel free to roll your head one way or another. Nothing, no one on this earth can hold me down or back. I am infinitely loved and supported by the universe. My foundation is based on love. Inhale, come all the way to the top. Feel free to come to upward worship if that doesn't strain your neck. And then exhale, let's humbly hold again to our Uttanasana standing forward fold. So feel free to bring those blocks into play. We're going to step the right foot back this time. Once that right foot steps back, we're going to take the hand off the right block. We're going to take the elbow to the opposite side of the knee so the palms can glue together and we can twist to the left. Exhale, unwind from that. Bring the back foot forward. Immediately step your left foot back. Come to that low runner's lunge. Left elbow to the opposite side of that front knee. Hands glued together, twist and wind to the right. Good, exhale, unwind from that twist. Lose the blocks, plant the palms, stepping into your plank. Exhaling, backing up to downward facing dog. Doing two more of those. Inhale, returning to plank. Exhale, Adho Mukha Sanasana. 
One more, not rushing, but breathing your way. One to the other. All right, inhale, lift your heels up. Exhale, descend down to your knees. Untuck your toes. We're going to build some upper body strength. We're going to tip the shoulders past the wrists, lower like a half chaturanga. Inhale, press back up to table. Exhale, back into extended child pose. Continue that work. Inhale, coming to all fours. Exhale, shoulders cross past your fingers, elbows hug in. Inhale, use your triceps to lift back up. And exhale to extend the child pose. Do two more of those. Last one. When you come back to child pose, this time, relax your arms. So that means one of two things. You can either plop to the elbows, fingers naturally curl in, or you can circle them around your body. Palms open at your feet. Taking the weight off the wrist. So there's no pressure in your hands. And let your breath tap you back within. We're going to come forward and down to the belly in a prone position. So one way to get there is to rock up, to drop the hips, and then to roll to the belly, chest, and brow. Your hands are going to be located right up underneath your shoulders. Your legs are going to lift and lengthen back behind you, feet gluing to the mat, buttocks firming up. Inhale, roll up, Bhujangasana. Good. Exhale, roll down. We'll do four more. Inhale, rolling up to Cobra. Good, exhale, release. Same thing. All right, we're going to move back into some of those sun sal elements. Inhale, push up to all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog. All right, we're going to do three more of those gentle vinyasas today. Inhale, come forward, plank. Exhale, re invert. Twice more. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Sorry about that. I'll put it on airplane mode. From your final third, you can determine how you want to bring your feet to the top of the mat. So the most gentle way is just stepping one foot at a time to the top of the mat. When you arrive, take R to Uttanasana. Exhale, drop back down and in. Inhale up to the top to upward worship. And exhale, return to the heart. Close your eyes. Firming citations to the sun, to the awakening light within us all, into the dawning of a higher state of consciousness. And all I have this woman who's been coming to my class in Mount Juliet, and uh, 
she was coming to class and she can't connect to her body. She's very out of body. You tell her to do something and she's very, very confused. And she finally stayed after class one day recently and told me she had a brain disease that prevents her from being so coordinated. And so since the pandemic, we pretty much have been staying on our mats. We haven't been walking around as much. So lately I've been going over there and just trying to help her a little bit, you know. But she's been staying after class talking about how much it's helping her. And she's been coming two or three times a week. She said, I no longer have the anxiety I have. And she said, I just love this place. She goes, you need to charge more. <laughs> she was like, there's so much more than physical exercise happening in this class. You need to charge more. <laughs> she's just being funny. And then the other day she got up and she was like, I feel drunk. <laughs> and she was like, this feels so good. I was like, yeah, but it's a clean buzz, right? <laughs> we were talking about what a clean buzz it was. And I said, think about it. People drink or do drugs to alter their state of consciousness. That's exactly why meditation and philosophy that backs yoga up, that's what it's meant for, to alter our state of consciousness, but in a clean, elevated way. And so when we say that affirmation, salutations to the sun, to the awakening consciousness within, and to the dawning, of a much higher consciousness in all beings. Like it's about that elevation. So let's take this job again. Put it behind the back, shoulder distance. Shoulders roll back. Arms lengthen down. Bend your knees. Push back with your tailbone. And then start to fold over your lap. Arms reaching up to the heavens. And then if your shoulders are dropping towards your earlobes, keep lifting the strap up, up and away. Breathe most especially. This is going to prepare us for our deeper bridge. Now lower the tailbone, pressurize the feet more, and slowly come up. All right, let's release the strap. So in blissful flow today, we actually did a more vigorous vinyasa and we were working up to wheel, which is even a bolder back then than bridge. And uh, we were doing it from the floor and we were also doing it at the wall and arching back. What I want us to work on in gentle is cranking the shoulders back, just like you were holding that strap. And we're going to try to lace the hands behind us when we're in bridge. If you find that's accessible now, then most likely you're going to be able to achieve it in bridge. All right, so let's come down to the floor. Have a block close by, but we're not going to use it yet. And come down to your back. So we're going to move towards a little bit uh, deeper of a bridge pose. So the feet are aligned under the knees. The toes point straight ahead. Push down to the four corners of each foot and then start to use your hamstrings and glute muscles to lift up. The higher you lift, the more you're going to be engaging the muscles in your low back. We're going to lean our weight from one shoulder to the other in order to roll the shoulders down and underneath us like a platform. Also, so that the hands can come together and lace. And then press down through the pinky fingers. I mean, not, it's not gonna be a lot of weight. It's just very lightly resting there. See if you can lift your pelvis. See if you can lift your chest towards your chin. And if your hands don't quite lace together, at least tuck the shoulders under you and have your arms stretching out towards your feet like you were holding a strap. Take three large deep breaths. Now keep the shoulders kind of tucked up underneath your body, but 
undo the lacing of the hands so that you're sitting on your hands as your buttocks comes to the floor and then straighten out through each leg. We're going to move into fish for a counter. Tuck the elbows in and root through the elbows so that your whole torso lifts off the floor. Point your toes. Once your chest is up, hang your head back. Let it barely, barely, barely take rest on the floor. It's firming to yourself mentally. My soul floats on waves of cosmic light. My soul floats on waves of cosmic light. Lift your head up and then roll down to your shoulders. Release your hands from being under you and hug both knees in. So that was our big pose for today. That fancier variation of bridge. If you feel like you need a supine twist, you can take it. If you feel like you're ready for Shavasana, we're going to set up for that. So I'll give you a couple options for Shavasana today. One would be Stonehenge, where your blocks are like columns, bolster on top of that. So that your legs are elevated and you're flat on your back. And the other position I'm going to give you a choice with is like a restored bridge, except with a bolster. So you could lay the bolster onwards on your mat, you could sit on it. Head dropping to one side and heels dropping on the other side. So you're receiving that bridge formation as you take breaths. You choose one of those restorative postures. I'm turning that off because even though I'm not going to play the song for you, I'm going to read you the lyrics. I know you've all heard the song before. When you're weary and feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them all. I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found, like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down. Like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down. When you're down and out, and when you're on the street, when evening falls so hard, I will comfort you. I'll take your part when darkness comes and the pain is all around. Like a bridge over troubled waters, I will lay me down. Sail on, silver girl, sail on by. Your time has come to shine. All your dreams are on their way. See how they shine. Oh, if you need a friend, I'm sailing right behind you. Like a bridge over troubled water, I will ease your mind. 
like a bridge over troubled water, I will ease your mind. At the end of our practice, you're finding your way down to this lying position. I want you to notice how supportive your breath alone can be. The support underneath your body holding you in this place. In this time. Feel the support of the cosmos and the universe at large rooting for you and having your best interest at heart. Know that you are infinitely loved and supported. Whoever you are, whatever you've done, whatever inner demons you face. Lean into your heart, draw into your heart. Seek and find it in your heart. It's all abiding here and now.
Maybe wiggling the fingers and the toes. If you're in that restorative bridge, you may just want to bend your knees. And roll away to one side. If you've been in Stonehenge, you can hug the knees in and then roll to one side. After acclimating on your side body, you can come to take a more formal seat. Sitting upright, eyes closed. Tuning back into your breath, back into yourself, back into your heart. The light and the love that I hold within my heart bows in deep respect to the love and the light that you hold within yours. And may we all remember there is an infinite supply available to each and every one of us. Namaste. Namaste.